into it as what Khalil came here to talk about is the fact that the Packers beat the 49ers 38 to 10 on Sunday. It was the 49ers without Brock Purdy, without Trent Williams, and without Nick Bosa. Those three guys. Charvarius Ward. Charvarius Ward. Brandon Ayuk. Shall I go on? You guys get the point. But Packers, Packers get revenge against the 49ers for ending their season last year. Khalil, as our resident Packers fan on the panel, um, this is second, third, fourth time that you've been on the podcast, and every single time it's to show off 49ers fans. But um, just how were you feeling yesterday as the Packers absolutely dismantled the uh, the Allen – I'm forgetting the dude's first name already. Brandon but, Allen. Brandon Allen. I was about to say Kyle Allen. The Brandon Allen led San Francisco 49ers. How did you feel about that, Khalil? Uh, it was a win. I already knew that was gonna happen. Um, to be honest, it, I I still feel like you guys are a good team. It's just you know everybody has to get healthy. You guys gotta get hot at the right time. And we see you guys down the line, but it was just a win. I already knew that we needed. And once we got it, it was like okay, now it's on to the next. Now it's we have to try to keep up with the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings in order to get a top seed in the NFC. But I feel I feel like we did we did what we were supposed to and that was good. Josh Jacobs, I forget the total stat, but we you know he had three touchdowns, which was you know what we needed and you know sort of solidify toughness and you know that's what the Niners bring and I'm glad we were able to do that. Yeah, uh, Josh Jacobs had a hell of a day yesterday, and uh, one of my fantasy teams was very, very happy about it as uh, he carried me. Well, I thought he was carrying me to a win. Then Saquon Barkley happened. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but, Javon, us 49ers fans, we're, we're down bad right now. It, it don't feel good. Um, I'm so torn, as I said on last week's episode during my return, that I'm torn because – Part of me wants to just give up on the season and say, get a top 10 pick. The other part of me sees the fact that the division is still very winnable and they could go on a run, as Khalil was saying. And so uh, now given this loss, Javon, um, from the 49ers led by Brandon Allen, just how are you feeling about the San Francisco 49ers right now? Yeah, kind of going into the week uh, after losing to Seattle at the last second, and then you're looking at the schedule like, okay, we got to go to Green Bay, and we got to go to Buffalo. So you're looking at it like, okay, well, we just lost to Seattle at home at the last second. Uh, and, again, we probably should have won. And then you're looking like, okay, like a couple of guys dealing with injuries. Nick Bosa was out during that game. And then after the Seahawks game, he said, I'm probably going to miss a couple of weeks. Or it was reported that he was going to miss a couple of weeks. I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll be out. Nick Bosa. Then later in the week comes, yeah, Brock's got a shoulder. Well, what do you mean Brock's got a shoulder? What's the we all have shoulders. Just, well, I don't know what <laughs> what do you what does that mean? Yeah, his he can't really throw the ball. Uh, but we'll we'll see how the week goes. So that's that's not good. Oh yeah, and you know, Trent, he's not practicing either. He's he's gonna be out. Okay. So we're already down. Nick Bosa, guy who just signed for a shit ton of money last year. Trent Williams, arguably the greatest left tackle ever. Hall of Famer for sure. Um, and now Brock can't throw the ball. So I'm like, you're telling me we're going to be rolling out Josh Dobbs and or Brandon Allen. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. So Thursday comes along and he tries to throw the ball. He throws a couple of passes, walks off the field. I'm like, that's not good. We're It's looking like the Brandon Allen show. And, you know, the line before the week started, uh, the Packers were favored by two. They're already favored. Um, once the Brock Purdy news came out, um, that went to like five and a half uh, Packers. So Vegas was kind of already telling you, hey, this is going to be a shit show. And then, you know, the, we get to the game. Brandon Allen, he didn't look bad at first. At first. Um <laughs> I thought he played well in the first half. I, I will give him, like, he was not fucking it up like I thought he would be doing it. Um, 
but they but they can hardly move the ball. I don't mean to cut you off, but it's like until oh, yeah. that until that touchdown drive to Kittle, like, like they could not move the ball. Quarter, like we weren't really able to move the ball in the whole first quarter. Like the Packers were running the ball down our throats. Josh Jacobs looked like right. he looked right. like uh, <laughs> he looked like Barry Sanders. I wouldn't even say Barry Sanders. He looked more like Bo Jackson because he was just running over everybody, and he would you couldn't tackle him. <laughs> Um, Jordan Love was getting, he was sitting in the pocket. He was just, you know, Hey, checking his watch, you know, making sure he's, he's checking his email back there. Like he's just, he's got all the time in the world. He's got nothing but time on his hands in the pocket. Um, Romeo Dobbs is running wide open. Jaden Reed's doing his thing. Like every, the Packers were doing everything that they wanted to do. Anything that they wanted to do, they, they did. And, the Niners weren't doing shit about it. It was just they were getting steamrolled the entire time. Um, I forget what the score was. It was a lot to a little at the at halftime. And then I think I don't know if the Niners got the ball. I think the ball, Niners get the ball to start the second half. Debo runs for 87 yards for only to get called back. And for me, and I'm just like, you know what? When things are starting to go all right, I'm like, okay, we can maybe try and score off this. Nah, yeah, bring that on back, player. As our boy Teddy Long used to say back in the day, um, I just think, and then you Brandon Allen's throwing picks, even though it wasn't his fault. Debo is not catching the ball; ball's going right through it, brother. We need you to catch that. We're paying you a little bit. You're you're, you're paid to do. I don't know. I get it. You had a great run in. You had a great kickoff return. And got called back, but I need you to play. We're paying you to play receiver. It's not, it's not adding up right now. Um, you know, Brandon Allen, he has the sack fumble, and I'm just like, all right, like he, he's a backup. What do you expect? Like he's, he hasn't played a game in like four years, so it's like, what do you, you can only expect so much from him. I mean, uh, Jawan Jennings didn't really get the ball. Christian McCaffrey is, looks a step slower. Um, I feel like our only reliable receiver in this game was George Kittle. Um, he did whatever he wanted to do. I still think he's an all-pro type of player. But, I mean, the Packers were just better. They looked better. They had better players on the field. And that's tough to say given how good our roster has been over the last couple of years. And, yeah, the Packers pretty much did what the Niners usually do to other teams in in years past. And that, there's not really much to it. We got outcoached. We got outplayed. I mean, the I, I did not have high hopes going into this game, but I didn't think it would be this bad. Like, they damn near hung up 40 points on us. So, it's it's a very tough pill to swallow. I'm seeing all these other fans. There's Packer fans out there. There's Raven fans out there. I mean, hell, even Charger fans are happy. And they're all hitting me up saying, what's wrong, what's wrong with your team? I don't know. I mean, hey, man, I just wish – even if Brock played in this game, I don't even know if we win because Brock doesn't play defense. Our defense is atrocious right now. Now I get we we're missing a couple of guys, but I mean, god damn, like we can't. The middle of the field is wide open every single time, and if we're not doing that, we just got twelve men on the field in back to back plays. Our special teams has been the worst special teams like in the entire league. For, I'd say. For a solid like three years like it's bad it's to the point where i don't even want anybody back there just touch back we'll just hope for the best ball up top as some people might say i mean like on a punt return like i only just like get away from the what are we <laughs> just get away from the ball i mean i i don't it's it's very painful to watch on how bad the San Francisco board. This is the team that I make fun of. This was the, like the type of team that we played like. I would make fun of you for the way that your team played. But now who's wearing the clown mask? I guess it's me <laughs> and Sean. Like, it's it's and uh, and it's just so painful to watch. Like it's like you're just watching the game with no emotion you're just like oh there he goes again and it's like 
where do you go from here? Because you're kind of in the middle. There's like, as Sean was saying, you're not bad enough for a number one pick, obviously. But your division is kind of like, okay, like the you're five and six, but the team that's leading the division is six and five. I'm not saying, hey, because right now the, the they don't look like a playoff team. However, the team in eighth place is also seven and five, and that's the Washington Commanders. So it's not the end of the world, but it's we need to get healthy and we need to play better because it's like the games that we were supposed to win did not happen. Those were the gimme wins. The gimme wins are kind of like we're running out of gimme wins. There's the Bills. We got the Bills on our schedule. We got the Lions on our schedule still. The Dolphins are are ever since Tua came back look like a totally different team. So there's a bunch of teams that left left over that in these last six games are looking to fucking take your head off. And it's like, okay, you're trying to make the playoffs, but you're playing like shit against the good teams and the bad teams. What happens when you go up against the Bills? Oh, they just beat the Chiefs last week. They're the best team in the league, damn near. What happens when you play the Lions? Lions are going to push your fucking shit in if you play like this. Like, it's going, it's, it's like the Niners are favored to miss the playoffs. Like, the Niners haven't been underdogs in, like, two years. Like, they haven't been dogs in a game in, in two years. And that's insane to say. To be favored in almost every game that you play in, they haven't been dogs in two years. They're like, oh, we got Brandon Allen out there, and we'll see. But, yeah, if you want to throw some money on the Niners and miss the playoffs, they're, like, minus 130 or something like that. So, it's 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 a very bad scene in San Francisco right now. Yeah, and as Javon uh, was alluding to there, the 49ers were the betting underdog for the first time since 2022, which broke a streak of 36 consecutive regular season games that the 49ers were favored in. And so uh, it ain't looking good in Santa Clara. Kaz, last week Kevin was really enjoying uh, – the fact that Geno Smith had that last second touchdown to beat the 49ers. Now things are much, much worse as the 49ers lose by 28 points. Are you just what, what are your emotions like when it comes to the 49ers right now, Kaz? Because they aren't necessarily a competitor of the Eagles. So just, I'm curious to know how you feel about the 49ers this season. You guys are fortunate. Uh, while well, not being fortunate because you're because of your division, um, it's all about <laughs> yeah. <I'm, laughs> all right, let me tell you why I'm laughing, okay? Because I glanced up, and for some reason, either my computer got a little glitchy for a second, or the lighting hit Toddy's face the right way for a second. But I thought I saw a tear, a gleam. Oh, <laughs> <Lord. laughs> I, like, I was like. My man's down bad, bro. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's only week 13 right now. Like, we got to chill out. But um, now what I'll say is uh, you guys, you guys are in a very fortunate, unfortunate position. Um, and it's because of the fact that this division is still uh, up for grabs right now. Um, if you guys were in a different division, pretty much any other division of football besides the AFC South, which is still – AFC South and the South. AFC and NFC South with the Texas <laughs> losing. Um, you know, you guys – your season's over. So – you're, you play bad football. You guys are very injured. I'm the kind of person that um, once a team has not just one, but like two or more significant injuries, especially on like the same side of the ball. And what I mean by that is obviously, you know, still got to talk about it. Like, you know, no IU, it does factor in. CMC coming back, he's still trying to find his group. It's not like he came back and you can see that he's not the same CMC. But like you're trying to plug in a random quarterback into Brock Purdy's system. Um, we don't even know if this guy's even a Brock Purdy type quarterback. I don't know anything about him. So it just doesn't usually work in your favor, but it's not the end of the world just because these guys, from what we know so far, um, aren't done. You know, now for Brock Purdy, I'm not sure if you guys have been paying attention to his injury, but it's a labrum injury, which is if I read correctly, it's where like the it's a ligament that connects the um shoulder into like the socket, and it's like kind of big. 
And I guess it's either like it's either one way or the other. It's either season ending or it's it's going to be like, you know, a week off. And that's about it, because depending on, on, on how bad the tear is. Um, so, like, if Brock Purdy doesn't have to get surgery, obviously, I think you guys will be fine. I think you guys can win um, a good chunk of games throughout the rest of the season. Also depends on you guys brought up you have to play Detroit and you have to play Buffalo, right? Yep. Yep. So you, you do understand that Buffalo might clinch early. Now, I'm not sure what week that is, but they might we play them literally next week. So. Right. And then That's what about – and then what about also – and then the what about – to see our ass get whooped. And then what about um, Detroit when you guys play them? I, God, I, I assumed – yeah, as I said, I assumed one or the other. That's there's a good 17. chance they're sitting the starters. Now, what stinks is if that was the opposite, you guys would be in a better position because – most more likely than not, unless the Eagles lose a couple games, Detroit's not going to sit their starters until they solidify that one seed. Because or they're, they're right just going to try the hardest that they can and try to get that number one seed. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, Washington, though, you know, because TV. the only the only two teams that have a chance to take the one seed from Detroit, which I think the realistic one is us, is us and the Vikings right now. Um, nobody else is going to the Packers, but you guys are you guys are still behind the Vikings right now. So realistically. Well, okay. Worry about taking care of your division. Wait, have the Packers played the Vikings yet? Yeah. Yes, we lost. Yes. We play them at the end of the season. So, yeah. So, two weeks we got the Lions. Yeah. So, and they might, and they might, but either way, if Detroit's in a position to where they don't have to play the last week, last football game or whatever, because you know, they're two games up on the Vi- on the Packers right now. The Vikings maybe plummet and maybe Philadelphia loses a game or two. You guys might look out there. So, like, what I'm saying is, yeah, you guys have two very hard teams for your schedule, but you're doing it without your guys there. So, yeah, you're in a win-now situation. But, like I said, you're fortunate because you're losing, okay, when you have significant injuries. Like, you know, it's not just like you're missing, you know, your right tackle. Not saying that's not a big deal, but, you know, there's a big difference between missing that guy and missing Brock Purdy, who is pretty much that entire offense when you guys don't have CMC. Okay, so it's not a big deal. You got your ass kicked. You're supposed to get your ass kicked. Let's just call it what it is because of the, the situation. You're on the road. The Packers are a damn good team. Okay. And then you, you throw in some random guy that none of us even know who the hell he is. So yes, 10 to 38 final score, defensive dominant game. That's what you do to quarterbacks. that don't know what the hell they're doing. You, you just scheme around it. Like, okay, this guy, who is this guy? Look, we're going to, we're going to put this guy in a situation where he needs to win the game with his arm. It ain't going to happen. And then we're going to obviously rely. That's going to rely on CMC to, be the CMC of old and come out and have the game of his life to beat us. You guys could have had Brock Purdy back. You guys could have had your entire team back. I don't think you're winning this game. I'm sorry. Like 10 to 38. And as defensive dominant, I mean, Jordan Love only had to throw the ball 23 times. Only completed 13 passes. That's how you know you got your ass with defensively right there. When a quarterback doesn't have to do anything. And even with Josh Jacobs, it's not like he had a monster game. He scored a lot of touchdowns. But we've seen plenty of running backs go for 100 yards, 106 yards. It's not like he did something – Saquon Barkley, like not to throw shade on Josh Jacobs, but it just looks on like statistically. And if you watch the game, it's just like the Niners could not do anything on offense, like literally nothing on offense that mattered. That's a defensive dominant game. So even with your guys coming back, you're not going to stop um, Josh Jacobs from probably putting up the same amount of, of, of yards on the ground, probably still going to court, score a t- couple touchdowns. And on top of that, you know, Jordan Love, if he needs to, which he didn't have to, he's going to throw the ball a lot more than, than 20 three times. So um, just a game that you guys probably was hoping and praying you'd win, but the odds were, were against you. Even before the Brock Purdy injury, minus two on the road, that's not a bad, like those are, no, those are bad odds when you're, when you're the underdog or when you're putting, you know, you guys are two point underdogs, but you're still underdogs against a very good team. Like it's, you guys were underdogs for a reason. So I think it's just one that you guys should put past you and, as an Eagles fan, I'm, I'm not a as a football fan. I'm not a fan of teams being hurt to to lose. I don't like that. I like to beat teams when they're at their best. That's why I hate the idea of the Cowboys not having Dak Prescott right now as an Eagles fan. I don't want to beat you with no Dak. I want to beat the shoddy with Dak and everybody. I want all. I want everybody there and for us to roll you. So I think that you guys are more okay than what you guys think. It's just those two games in your schedule that's scaring the shit out of you. And one of those games, like I said, you might not even have to play them at their full power, and you guys not be knocking on the door of. A, either a division, which I think is what you guys should go for is division. Don't think about anything else. Go for that division. Well, you, might be knock, choice. you might be knocking on the door of a 7 seed potentially if the rest of, of the teams in the NFC um, start to start to shit the bed. Somebody has to do it. These teams that are winning right now, we can't all win. So somebody's got to start losing. Commanders. So whether it be somebody, but you know, you already seen it right now with the commanders. 
Commanders start up hot. What did they lose? Like three straight. All of a sudden, that's one team kind of slowly, you know, going down the playoff rankings. If they mess around too much, they can end up only having about eight eight wins, nine wins. And they still that's it. The yeah. So it's one of those situations where right now you guys probably are like, what the hell are we gonna do? But it's like really you guys aren't in as bad of a situation as you could be because teams are going to start losing games. And for my sake, I hope it's the Lions. But you guys got beat down. Um, it's, it's just one of those situations where it's just bad timing. Bad, bad timing to not have your, your guy in there. But at the same time, is it really? Because with Brock Purdy, you're still not winning this game, guys. You're not winning this game. Kaz, I appreciate you saying that you wanted to see teams get beat at full strength because – as we know in the past, uh, that hasn't always been the case with the 49ers, uh, especially when it comes to the to the Eagles. So I'm glad to hear you say that. And um, I, I would agree that I don't think even the 49ers at full strength, I don't think they win this game because the Packers wanted to get their lick back. And just like the, the saying is, oh, Pack is back. Well, the Pack wanted to get their lick back. And I think that'll be the case with the Lions as well. The 49ers don't play them until week 17. So that could help them out if the Lions somehow run away with the NFC and they're able to lock it up. Um, But it'll be interesting because I think the Lions want to get their lick back too. Like that's the one thing about being a successful playoff team is everyone wants to get revenge against you. Um, And so I guess we'll just have to wait and see uh, with that. Even just looking at the rest of the 49ers schedule as they stand at five and six entering December because Sunday's game is on December 1st. I think they lose to the Bills, beat the Bears, hopefully beat the Rams at home. They would have to play well to beat the Dolphins unless Tua gets concussed again and his career is over. And I'm going to take a second to knock on wood because I don't want to see that happen. Um, and then, obviously, the Lions at home week 17 and then at the Cardinals to wrap up the season. I think that the 49ers finish the season 9-8, and eight, and that's me being optimistic. So they would have to go 4-2 and two to end the season. Um, it'll it'll be really interesting. And uh, Kaz, just to touch on one other thing that you said is us 49ers fans were hoping and praying that we would win this game. I mean, that's kind of how I felt for all the injuries. But, Toddy, if I may quote you from your pick um, you said, God help me, 49ers. <laughs> and, and so uh, we, we, we seriously were, were hoping and praying. Um, Khalil, before we move on to our next game and, and really uh, hear what Kaz has to say about his Eagles, and also Kevin is tuned in right now wherever he is. He says go birds, and so we're going to get to the birds next. But, Khalil, before we move on, um, I wanted to ask you just what's the ceiling of this Packers team? Like, can they can they actually compete for a division title? I don't think so. Maybe you feel differently. I do think that the Packers team is probably a playoff team, but where they go from there, I'm not sure because it's very top heavy in the NFC, but also 60% of the top five teams in the NFC come from the North, as Toddy would like to say with an F. And so uh, just what, what do you think about the ceiling for this Packers team? Uh, I think, I think we have a real good shot of winning the division. Only just based off the sole fact that the Vikings still have to play the, the Lions again, and we still we still have another game with the Vikings, and we still have another game with the Lions. The Lions beat us, but they didn't beat us. We we had too many penalties. We were an undisciplined team. Too many, too many, like you know, too many little things that could be fixed. That way, we we could have won that game at home, but you know, them being more disciplined and more well better coached than us. They, they they got the victory, but do I think we could still win our division? Yes, but is it realistic? Probably not. Looking at their schedule, they have an easy schedule. But yeah, I think I think we're a solid team that could potentially get upset in the playoffs. Maybe make it to the Super Bowl. Maybe, but being a Packer fan for the last ten years, I don't. Know, you don't have to show me. Yeah, they're not going to have the Cowboys to pick on in the playoffs this year. And so I I guess they're going to have to find a new target. Maybe it'll be the Commanders. Maybe it'll be the 49ers. I guess we'll we'll have to wait and see. As now. 